So yeah, my name is Kieran Loftus. I'm a, a software developer with Intel, uh, based in Shannon, Ireland. And um, like Ben said, my talk today is about the recent improvements in DBDKV host user and uh, the benefits that that's uh, bringing to, to OpenB Switch. So just very quickly uh, on the agenda today, I'll begin with uh, introduction to DBDKV host user for those of you who aren't familiar with it, and I guess those of you who are, you can consider it a bit of a, a refresh. Um, and then we'll have a look at the timeline of the host user in OpenB Switch. So this will be a high level overview of what the host rela related features have been added to OBS and when. And then we'll go into more detail on some of the recent improvements uh, like NUMA awareness and client mode and some potential uh, future improvements like uh, the VOS user PMD and zero copy. So I guess a good place to start is with what is DBDK VOS user or to go a level higher, what is DBDK? I think most people here know what DBDK is, but I said it's no harm to kind of touch on the, the basics um, for those of you who don't. So DBDK stands for the Data Plane Development Kit and it's a set of open source user space drivers and libraries um, that accelerate network I.O. And it was uh, integrated into OBS in version 2.2, allowing Open vSwitch to be run in user space and uh, take advantage of this accelerated network I.O. Um, so at this point in time in, in 2.2, OBS was primarily using uh, DBDK for accelerated physical I.O., so I.O. with a physical device. But <coughs> DBDK actually also offers accelerated virtual I.O., and one of the, uh, the options offered by DBDK for this is vhost user. And uh, so vhost user was uh, integrated into OBS in version 2.4 about a, a year and a half ago. And um, a kind of very high level um, description of how vhost user works is uh, QEMU, which is running the, the virtual machine, offloads the servicing of the, the virtual network interfaces to the DBDK backend, which is running in user space. Whereas typically this kind of processing would have been done in kernel space by uh, traditional methods like VertIONet and VHostNet. And you can see in the, the graph there that VHost user outperforms both of those by, by quite a margin, thanks to the reduction in kernel processing. So basically, all you really need to know is that VHost user is an accelerated virtual interface offered by OVS to BDK. And like I said, we're going to have a look at some of the incremental improvements that have been made to, to the library in, in DBDK and how that's impacting Open vSwitch. Okay, so this graphic represents kind of the past, um, present, and future of uh, vhost user in Open vSwitch. Um, so it shows the different release numbers in which different um, vhost related features have been added to Open vSwitch. Um, and just it's worth mentioning here these features were added by a, a number of different uh, contributors, not just myself. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's color coded as well, so the the black dots, they represent uh, functional improvements, and the white represent uh, performance improvements. So you can see we have a good uh, mixture of both um, on the graphic. So starting on the far left in version 2.2, this is kind of in pre vhost user times. Um, like I said, 2.2 was, was the, the OBS version in which TBDK was first integrated. And with that, you could use kernel vhost as a, a kind of basic uh, method for interfacing with a guest. And that was kind of the status quo for a few releases until version 2.4, which is when vhost queues was added, um, which is kind of the less elegant but equally performant predecessor to vhost user, which was also added in 2.4. And then from 2.5 onwards, that's kind of when the community started adding um, improvements to, to vhost user, the first being uh, multi queue, which is kind of self explanatory. Um, and then onto the current release, which is 2.6, we added a new more awareness. Uh, we ended up removing vhost queues because, well, it was kind of partly thanks to the, the fact that, you know, we were adding like, like all these nice new features for vhost user, but vhost queues didn't have these features, so it eventually got deprecated. Um, and then also in 2.6, we added uh, client mode. And then after that, we're in kind of post 2.6 territory, so uh, future, potential future improvements like the vhost PMD, uh, zero copy, and some more. So that's just to give you a you know, a high level sequence of events uh, about vhost user and open vSwitch, and I'll just go into detail on, on, on a couple of those features now, starting with uh, NUMA Awareness. So NUMA Aware vhost user is a DBDK feature that was introduced in, I think it was DBDK 16.4, and integrated into OBS 2.6, and uh, it was introduced to address a problem with a common enough uh, configuration 
whereby you've got uh, VMs with vhost user ports running on uh, separate sockets. So the diagram here shows uh, that kind of setup. So you've got two sockets, two VMs, each with a vhost user port, um, and you've got OBS TBDK running on the host. Um, and uh, so the, the memory associated with each port is, is color coded. So the, the memory associated with the VM0 is in blue, and the memory associated with um, VM1 is in green. Um, so you'll see there's three types of, of memory associated with, with each port. So you've got QEMI memory, OVS memory, and DBDK memory. And you'll kind of notice at first glance that the, the first port, uh, all of its memory is on the same socket in a kind of optimal configuration. But the second port um, has its memory split between two sockets. And the reason for that is because prior to this new malware feature in DBDK, DBDK had a limitation whereby all of the, the vhost memory allocated by DBDK had to come from the same socket, even if you had uh, VMs on different sockets. Um, so that was kind of, that introduced a performance issue because, you know, for every kind of packet you send and receive, you're going across the, the link between the two nodes, and um, that could quickly become a bottleneck. So in DBDK 16.4, this limitation was removed, and you can see there that the, the DBDK memory has moved to the correct socket. Um, but the picture still isn't complete. You can see the, in OVS now, the PMD thread servicing that port is still on the incorrect socket, and that's because prior to this feature as well, OVS wasn't new malware, and it didn't know, you know what socket the, the vhost user port was on. But um, now, thankfully, with the, with the addition of this DBDK feature, we can get that, we can retrieve that information from DBDK and uh, relocate the PMD thread if necessary. So you can see here, all of the memory now is on the, the correct socket. And uh, this is the, the most optimal configuration. Um, so kind of performance-wise, I measured a VM to VM test on the second socket um, and kind of compared uh, the scenario where we don't have new awareness and where we do. Um, and I saw a 50% increase in, in, in throughput for 64 by packets for this type of scenario. So it does give you a, a big boost for, for particular scenarios. Oh, and that's a shameless plug for an uh, article that's on software.intel.com that shows you, it explains the feature um, as well, and it shows you how to set it up in OpenV Switch if anyone is, is interested in trying it out. Okay, so the next feature is Client Mode and Reconnect, uh, which was also added in 2.6. And um, Client Mode was uh, introduced to address a limitation with uh, another common use case. And the use case this time uh, is when you reset the uh, DBDK backend, uh, VMs with vhost user ports can't regain connectivity easily. Um, they actually need to be rebooted um, in the event of, of, of switch failure. So that's not, uh, you know, it's not, it's very inconvenient for, for all users, but especially say in a production environment, you don't wanna have to reboot your VMs every time you reboot your switch. Um, so the reason for this limitation, I'll just give a bit of background on the, the architecture of vhost user. So, VHS user uses this Unix domain socket to pass control messages between um, OVS and QEMU. And in the default mode, um, it's OVS DBDK who creates the socket and QEMU connects to it. Um, so if the switch goes down, the socket goes down as well, and QEMU is left listening on a dead connection. If you bring the switch back up, uh, we create a new socket. It's in the same uh, location, but it's essentially a new socket and Kiwimi doesn't know about this new socket, and it's you know, uh, kind of sitting there listening on a, on a dead connection. And like I said, the only way to regain connectivity is to reboot, and that's not uh, always um, an option. So to address this issue, um, a new mode was introduced called client mode, where basically the client server model is uh, flipped, um, and uh, Kiwimi becomes the socket server, and OVS TBDK becomes the, the client who connects to the socket server. So in this case, if OVS TBDK goes down, we bring it back up and it can re reconnect the socket um, without any, any trouble because it's, it's managed by QEMU in this instance. Um, and again, there, there's another article on, on software.intel.com that shows you how to, to, to verify that in Open vSwitch. Okay, so from this point onwards, we're gonna be talking about potential future vhost improvements in Open vSwitch. So these are things that are you know, maybe available in DBDK already, but not in Open vSwitch yet. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is, is the VOS PMD, which was introduced in uh, DBDK 16.4, um, and there's a patch on the OVS mailing list at the moment to, to enable it, so I think it's, it's, it's under review now at the moment. Um, 
Okay, so kind of to understand what the VSPMD is, you need to know a little bit more about how DBDK is structured. Again, this is probably familiar to, to a lot of you. Um, but basically, in DBDK, you have uh, libraries and drivers. So some of your libraries are core libraries, so they'd be kind of integral to every single DBDK application. So they're, you know, your mbuf libraries, malloc libraries, that kind of stuff. The vhost library then wouldn't be a core library because it's not used in, in every DBDK application. And then you have drivers. Um, so these are also known as Polmo drivers or PMDs. And you essentially have a, a, a PMD for every kind of networking interface that's compatible with DBDK. So for example, there's a IXGBE driver would drive um, Intel A2599 cards or Niantic cards. Um, the I4TE would drive uh, Intel XL 710 cards. There's loads of different drivers for loads of different NIC vendors. Um, there are just some examples there. But uh, they're all accessible by means of a common API known as the, the Ether API. Um, and essentially, you can, you can push calls to the Ether API into your DBDK application. And under the hood, then DBDK will, will call the relevant driver code. It's kind of abstracted from the, the user. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, an intelligent library. Um, so OBS uses this, this library at the moment for DBDK ports and DBDK ring ports. Um, so there's infrastructure there for it already. And what the vhost PMD is, is a new Polmo driver that allows the vhost library to be accessed via this Ether API. Um, so that, it doesn't sound very intuitive, you know, you're saying why call one library with another, why don't we just call the, the vhost library directly like we do at the moment in OBS? But there's actually a lot of benefits from, from kind of going this long-winded way. Um, first of all, a simplified code path. So in OBS, we already have um, infrastructure to, to call the Ether API for our other port types. So if that's shared with the, with the vhost port as well, it's, it's, um, it greatly reduces the, the code path in Open vSwitch. As regards performance and usability, there shouldn't be any difference noticed by the user. It's, it's pretty much on par with calling the, 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 the library directly. Um, and then one of the kind of main benefits of using the vhost PMD in OBS will be hopefully um, easier future integration of vhost features in Open vSwitch. Because whereas before, for every new vhost feature, we had to kind of go in and look at the, the vhost library directly and say, all right, what's the new function? How is it called? Um, hopefully with the PMD, we're going to be able to go through the, the Ether API, which is kind of more familiar anyways. And um, it should be a, a bit easier to, to integrate future features. Uh, so that's the motivation behind that. And then the last, um, uh, the last feature I'm going to talk about is zero copy, which is a, a performance improvement included in the DBDK. 16.11 release, um, which is, should be out any time now. Um, and essentially, so in, in, in vhost, there's kind of two paths. There's a DQ path and an NQ path, and both typically incur a packet copy, and we all know that's a, an expensive operation. Um, so taking the, the DQ path, for instance, this is the kind of VM to OVS path. So here, a, a packet arrives on the VM. We copy that into, into host user space, into OBS DBDK, where we read it and you know, extract fields, classify it, that kind of stuff. The NQ path is basically the opposite of that. Um, a packet arrives on the host on OBS DBDK, for example, from a, a physical port, and we have a, you know, maybe a rule installed saying, you know, switch this packet to the VM. So here we'll, co we'll copy the packet into the guest address space, where the guest can then read the packet and uh, do whatever it wants with it. So, there's no, well, for me anyways, there's no kind of obvious way to remove the copy on this path, unless, I'd say, probably you'd need to modify the QEMU code or the Verteo code. But it is possible to remove the copy on the DQ path. And that's if, instead of copying the packet down and then reading it, if we read it directly, if we read the Verteo descriptor buffer directly, um, that's one way of, of, of removing the copy. So that's implemented in DBDK uh, 16.11. Um, the thing with it is, it's not suitable for all packet sizes. Um, so for small packets, you won't, already, you won't always see a performance improvement. But with large packets, you certainly will. So for example, I ran just a, a, a simple test here, um, VM to VM, and saw a 15% increase um, in throughput, which is uh, uh, decent enough, I suppose. Um, OK, so I think I'm running out of time. I'm going to touch really quickly on some other potential future improvements that we might see in, in, our, in, o, in OVS with VHOS user. So the first is Verto user, which is a, a new pull mode driver type in, in DBDK 16.11. And it's basically a method of using VHOS user in containers um, to work with, or for this to work with OVS, I don't think we need any code changes actually. So 
it's something I'm hoping to try out soon enough. Um, also in 16.11, there's been some kind of general optimizations done to the uh, mergeable buffers path. Um, so we should get this for free in, in OpenVSwitch when we integrate uh, 16.11. Um, and then finally, there's kind of a proof of concept going on called the vhost PCI, which is essentially a, a VM to VM per, uh, path performance <coughs> enhancement, where I think essentially you bypass the host and you can copy packets directly one VM to another. So I'm not sure how that would work with Open vSwitch, but it's something I'll definitely be keeping an eye on anyways. Um, okay, so that's, that's it. Um, I guess my concluding message will be, uh, since it was introduced into OBS in, in version 2.4 about a year and a half ago, uh, VOS user has come a long way, thanks to you know, the great work being done by the DBDK community um, and all these great new features that they're, they're integrating into it. Um, and we're certainly reaping the benefits in Open vSwitch, and it looks like we'll continue to do so you know, well into the future. Um, so thanks very much. Um, I'd happily answer any questions if anybody has any.